Anthony Robinson, the Healthy Heart Coach here. And do you know one of the best things that we can do to improve our heart health is to lose unwanted and unhealthy body fat. But that's often easier said than done, as evidenced by the fact that nearly 32% of Americans are classified as overweight and almost 40% are classified as obese. The reason most people will fail in their efforts at losing body fat and weight, frankly, is not their fault. You see, we've been told for decades by so-called experts from the medical and health communities that the most important aspect to losing weight and body fat is following the energy balance or the calories in, calories out model as our primary methodology for losing that unwanted body fat. Now this calories in, calories out model basically just says expend more calories than you consume daily to lose weight. And while energy balance is a component of weight loss, it is a drastic oversimplification. Now the problem with the calories in versus calories out model is that it's based on a faulty premise that says all calories are the same. And that is just blatantly false, without question. Let me illustrate the point further by using the example of, say, comparing eating 750 calories of broccoli versus consuming 750 calories of a sugary soda. Now, this example I like, it's often cited by Dr. Mark Hyman, who happens to be the medical director at the Cleveland Clinic's Center for Functional Medicine, which the Cleveland Clinic also happens to be the number one heart hospital in the world. So, now if we were to believe that this calories in versus calories out model is correct, that would require us to believe that drinking 750 calories of a sugary soda is the exact same as eating 750 calories of broccoli. Now, do you honestly think that drinking 750 calories of a sugar-filled soda will have the same effect on your weight, your waistline, and your health as eating 750 calories of broccoli? If you do, let me know because I have some beautiful oceanfront property right in the middle of Iowa that I would love to sell you. But knowing that there is a difference between these two calorie sources, despite their equality in calories, is basic common sense. But unfortunately, folks, common sense isn't always so common these days. It is extremely important that we draw the distinction between quality and quantity. You see, even foods that have the exact same quality of, or quantity of calories, excuse me, can have a vastly different nutritional quality and can have a very different effects on both your weight and your health. And that is because different foods affect your metabolism, hormone levels, hunger levels, and appetite, and thus your weight differently. So let's go ahead and dig a little deeper into our broccoli versus soda example. Now the soda, which is 750 calories, is also the exact same amount that you're gonna find in a double big gulp from your neighborhood 7-Eleven. Now this soda is 100% sugar and it contains 186 grams, that is 46 teaspoons of sugar in that one soda. Now, as soon as you drink your soda, your gut's gonna quickly absorb the fiber-free sugars, the fructose and the glucose. Now what happens is the glucose spikes your blood sugar and that starts a domino effect that includes high insulin and bad hormonal responses that kicks in some really, really crappy biochemistry into gear. Now the high insulin, what it does, it increases your storage of belly fat. It increases inflammation, raises triglycerides, lowers HDL, the good cholesterol, raises blood pressure, all of which dramatically, dramatically increase your risk for heart disease. And on top of that, it lowers testosterone in men and contributes to infertility in women. But wait, there's more. When you drink your soda, your appetite actually increases because of insulin's effects on your brain chemistry. You see, insulin blocks the appetite control hormone leptin. You become what is known as leptin resistant. So your brain never gets the I'm full signal. Instead, it thinks you're starving. Then the fructose makes things even worse. It goes right to your liver where it starts manufacturing fat. This triggers more insulin resistance and causes chronically elevated blood insulin levels which drives your body to store everything you eat as dangerous belly fat. But we're not done yet. You also end up getting a fatty liver, which generates more inflammation, and chronic inflammation causes more weight gain. And anything that causes inflammation will worsen insulin resistance, and anything that causes inflammation is not good for our hearts. Now, another problem with fructose is that it does not send the informational feedback to the brain signaling that a load of calories just hit your body, nor does it reduce ghrelin. Ghrelin is the appetite hormone that is usually released when you eat real food. Soda contains empty calories that are devoid 
devoid of any nutritional value. Now, let's look at the 750 calories of broccoli. Those 750 calories of broccoli work out to be 21 full cups of broccoli, and they contain 67 grams of fiber. That's about, it also has about 23% protein, 9% fat, and 68% carbohydrates, good carbohydrates though. That's 510 calories from carbs. The sugar in the 21 cups of broccoli is equivalent to only 1.5 teaspoons versus the 46 from the soda. The rest of the carbohydrates though are low glycemic type found in all non-starchy vegetables, which are very slowly absorbed. High fiber, low sugar carbohydrates such as broccoli are slowly digested and don't lead to blood sugar and insulin spikes. Thus, weight gain does not happen. While sugar in bread are quickly digested carbs that spike your blood sugar. So, I think you can see safely from this example that why only counting calories does not lead to meaningful long-term weight and fat loss. Again, the calories in, calorie out model is not completely wrong. Rather, it is just a dramatic and drastic oversimplification. And frankly, counting calories is not as important as eating the right foods. But if you're still confused about what are the right foods to eat and what's to avoid, don't worry. Just be sure to subscribe to my channel because in the coming weeks, I'll be doing videos sharing with you in detail exactly what foods to eat and what to stay away from, not just to lose unwanted, non-healthy body fat, but to make your healthiest on a cellular level from the inside out. Remember, new videos are posted every Tuesday and Thursday. So again, be sure to subscribe to get my latest heart health videos. I want to thank you so much for watching. I appreciate the heck out of you. Remember, today's the day. Today's your day. Make good things happen. I'll see you next time.